Here we are, 2019 Fallen Timber Classic presented by Toledo Trail Riders. Give a little fist bump to deck before the race, wishing each other good luck. Get ready to start, and here comes the world's shortest 10 seconds. exact number of riders we had today we were, we're riding the 35 plus C class and I think we had somewhere between 25 and 30 by the starting line it's hard to get a count we were clear down the right side but pretty good turnout here I know it was a record turnout for Toledo Trail Riders they had almost 300 riders at this event today and there's a deck shooting by me as we're exiting the grass track here and we're coming into a little bit of single track coming into scoring uh, the scoring loop after the after the start here was uh, about a half mile in, and then uh, we actually didn't revisit that portion of the grass track the rest of the race. So we just bypassed it and went around on what it was about an eight and a half mile loop here today. Mostly all real nice single track, real nice flowing track. Um, did have a little bit of grass track in one section of it where you could open it up and make some passes, but um, what a fun ride this was today. Crossroad a little bit. I nearly hit that tree. I don't know. It felt a lot worse on the bike than what it looks on the video. I thought I was hitting it for sure. And in the process of trying to save it, I hit my kill switch there and had to had to get re going here. So I lost looks like three positions there on that little little mistake. Here we're coming into the, the scoring loop here. Got a little little train of people going through here on the first lap, and then <laughs> it stalls his bike right here. And, and now that mistake kind of compounded itself as I get held up a little bit more. So this portion of the track, the morning session, this was actually their loop. It was about a mile and a half, so it had been ridden uh, a fair amount prior to us getting on on the track and it was actually ridden the, the day before they had an open ride they offered here that you could come and ride this one and a half mile section as a fundraiser for Tyler Vore to represent the, the U.S. over in the International Six Day later this year. Um, so the, there's a lot of riders that participated in that and um, this track actually was the most deteriorated out of anything that we that we rode all day. By the end of this, it was really rutted out. Um, the, the dirt in this particular section of the wood seemed to be wetter than the rest of it for some reason. So it, it held the moisture more and um, it got pretty bad by the end of the day. And my son earlier in the day, he was, he was riding this section and he was leading the race probably past the halfway point and he was starting to pull away a little bit. And then, uh, he got crossed up in one of these ruts and shot him off and he actually hit a tree, busted his radiator and actually pulled it right off the frame from the from the bolts that hold it in there and punctured it a little bit. He was able to finish the race and salvage a salvage a third place out of it, but uh, he didn't get didn't get injured at all, so we were thankful for that, but uh, it was uh, a bad experience for sure. Looks like I got one of the spots back that I lost when I when I stalled the bike earlier. Looks like decks up there, a couple positions in front of me here as we weave our way through some of this 
uh, this muddy, slippery portion of the track here. I got off again there. I'm just off to a, a great start so far. I took the left lane here hoping I could get around and make up one and I squeezed in there and got that well, got that position back so now I've got two of the positions back of the three that I lost and working on the next one now. Come into this section here, you're going to see a split here to the right where it's roped off in yellow now. That's where the kids track went this morning. They just looped around and kind of completed that section that we just rode. So they had about a mile and a half loop. So this section that we're on now is all fresh, hadn't been ridden by the, the morning session or anybody the day before. So this track was in a lot better condition and seemed to be a little bit drier for one reason or another over in this section of woods and uh, just made for a really fun ride. Nice, nice flowing trails, as I had mentioned earlier. So I'm up behind. I have Deck in front of me now, and uh, we'll get to see a good, good bit of him here for a while. I follow him for, for quite a while here. off to Toledo Trail Riders. They really went all out on this event. I know years past they hadn't had the best weather and 
two years ago it was a mud fest and it rained like crazy the day before and then last year we had 100 degree heat and it was a dust storm across the entire trail um, I didn't ride either of those I was I was at the track because um, my son had ridden in the morning but uh, both the conditions were uh, outside of what I would have wanted to ride in so I just decided not to but uh, today was absolutely perfect we had I mean I think it was a high of maybe 69 or 70 degrees so it was fairly cool and the track conditions were perfect I mean no dust at all no no mud it's a little slippery in a couple spots but you're gonna have that anywhere but uh, I mean, you could ask for, for better riding conditions than what we had today to be honest and the track workers here readily available I mean throughout the ride you'd see people at different check stations throughout the way if anybody ever did get into trouble or had a bike breakdown or a, or a crash or an injury there was somebody there to quickly assist with them I mean just really hats off to Toledo Trail Riders who did a great job with this event and uh, you know last year we really enjoyed ourselves at, at the track with just uh, all they had to offer you know they did did the raffle again this year to raise money for Tyler as he goes over to Portugal and uh, the support that they've that they've given given him and the district 14 has been great and deck gets a little crossed up there and I'm able to, to make my way by him exactly where I am right now probably if I had to guess somewhere around eighth or ninth I think when I came through on lap one I think I, I think it, the computer monitor said I was a ninth um, maybe tenth I, may, I think maybe tenth the first lap and I may have moved up to ninth by lap two um, overall for the day um, I looked at the results sheet and said I finished tenth but it didn't have the first place guy in our class on the results results sheet and I didn't stick around to uh, to see who that ended up being so I don't know if I was actually 9th or if I was 10th or 11th so I have to wait until the results are posted uh, later this week to see how I actually finished up. this event last year this I was told this was the same course as the year before but we ran it backwards so this may look a little familiar if you uh, didn't ride this year but you're watching this video this may look a little familiar to you just in reverse order
think that rider was in in my class and he let me go there. I was coming up on him pretty quick and he just pulled off, let me by. So it was much appreciated. We've got the helmet stickers that go on, on the back, one through 13 or maybe 14, I think it is. And, uh, you know, that's always an indicator of who's in your class and who's not. So if you know the person in front of you is not in your class, sometimes you can holler at them and they'll get out of your way. Um, if they are in your class, you know, I'm not going to holler at them unless they're really slowing me up. I'll just try to make, make a pass when the opportunity presents itself. Um, but sometimes I was out here and I actually forgot what number I was for a minute. I was like, saw some guys with 13s go by and I think that's the class that started behind us. And I was, I began to think that I was in 13 for a while. And then I was like, no, nah, I'm number 12. And mm -hmm. class 13 that started behind us was actually the, the 55 plus B and C riders. So some of those riders are uh, a little bit quicker than what we are in the C class here. Some of the B riders in the 55 plus. So. They were coming through and then uh, getting around us. I think we started a minute in front of them. And I think if they haven't caught me yet, they're going to be catching me here quickly and, and going on by. I did encounter a few riders this race that I'd come up on, and they didn't have stickers on the back of their helmet, which was a little frustrating because you didn't know if they were in your class or not and if you should holler to get out of the way or you should race them or or whatnot. It's just always nice to know, I guess. Or if a guy gets around you, he doesn't have a sticker on your helmet, you're like, well, did I lose a position or did I not? Um, I know they, you know, they try to make sure everybody has those at registration, but I did notice a few riders today didn't have those on their helmets. actually is the entire first lap of mine so probably close to nine miles I think where this video will show we've got the start you know that was that first half mile that we didn't actually run the rest of the race and then the remainder of the loop that we ran uh, the rest of the day here so I ended up getting four laps in today over the two hours plus one lap I think I finished in two hours and 14 minutes I want to say and I know that uh, couple riders that finished ahead of me in our class I think the sixth place rider or seventh place rider maybe maybe had to do the fifth lap they, they beat the leader back to the line after the white flag so they end up with five laps and I, I talked to I talked to a couple of them and they were uh, they were wishing that they would have got the checker instead of the white flag when they came through they were feeling pretty tired after the, the two hours here but uh, I was I was cramping up a little bit the third lap and uh, kind of starting to feel the the, hurt, the pain a little bit. My ham, hamstrings were cramping up. My, my hands were cramping up a little bit, but that kind of kind of recited. And then the fourth lap, I actually felt better than what I did the third lap. So um, worked out pretty good for me. I'm actually interested to see my lap times between lap three and four. I think. I think I may have been faster on my last lap than, than that lap number three. It'll be interesting to see if if that did happen. That's normally not the case for me. Normally I drop off and drop off each lap. You know, usually lap two is usually my quickest lap. Lap three is a little slower. Lap four is a little slower, and then it just goes downhill from there. But felt felt a little bit better this last lap today. I think I hydrated a little bit better earlier in the week. And there's one of the there's one of the uh, faster riders going by from the class behind me there. They, they finally caught up to us here. There's 
a section coming up right here quick. I'm, I'm coming up here and there's a log going across the trail at a 45 degree angle. And I thought I was going to bite it. I didn't anticipate it. Right there. I thought for sure the angle I was hitting at, I was going to hit the ground. But it worked out that uh, <laughs> I was squared up just enough to not have any issue with it. remember now that I look back on this first lap we're five miles in and I saw that five mile mark and it felt like I was way further in than that and I was one of us just pushing hard off the start I, I tend to do that the first lap go a little bit harder than what I probably should and really wear myself out but I was I was feeling it right now but at the same time it's kind of that mark where you you start to adapt your body starts to catch up and you start to feel a little bit better too so by time I was finished with lap one here, which was eight, eight or eight and a half miles in, I was I was feeling a little bit better at that point. But right now, I was like, oh my gosh, am I going to be able to make it this entire race? section right there we just went through that got to be a really deep rut by lap three and uh, I was trying to push off to the right there by that point to try to stay out of that mess
too, I came through one of the sections. We may have been through it already or it may be coming up. I'm not 100% sure where it was on the track, but I did see uh, they actually diverted the track a little bit and uh, there appeared to be a rider down and it looked like there may have been an ambulance on the road. So hope nobody was hurt too seriously there. I hadn't heard anything after the race of who it was or what the injury was. But uh, I hope, hope they were okay, whoever it was. idea of how fast some of these some of these double a riders are this was a essentially a nine mile loop on lap one because of the start i got lapped just after i completed lap one at the nine mile mark by tyler vore he came up behind me on lap one as i was going through scoring and then gets around me as i came out of the out of the check there that's incredible that he was able to make up nine miles granted they started 12 minutes ahead of us but that's that's flying they are incredible the way they shoot through this wood section and i got it's funny my wife actually was standing there at the check as i came through and she got a, a, a photo of me in front of tyler going through scoring so i sent it to him after the race and i said my wife my wife captured the impossible photo me in front of you so he, he got a chuckle out of that and replied back, better told me to frame it. <laughs> so you'll see that on the video. I've got a I've got that photo at the end and then you'll see him flying by me as we come out of scoring. I just hope I didn't hold him up too much going through there, but uh, he did get the win overall win today, so he, he was ripping. my bike and that when the handlebars come into the, the view here there on the left hand side I've got a, a rule chart for the timekeeping family enduros that, that we do and uh, I hadn't taken that off from, from the pinecone family enduro that we did a couple weeks ago and we've got a uh, we've got another one coming up here over in Greenville Ohio here in a couple weeks and I just decided I'd leave that on there it's not worth taking it off putting it back on it doesn't do any harm or slow me down at all so still got that on my handlebars from the last race we did there so if you guys are exclusive to hair scrambles and you don't do anything else i encourage you to get out and try some of the other off-road racing district 14 has to offer We've got the family enduro series We've got the 
Duro series, a sprint enduro series. Uh, we're going to be up at uh, Valley Valley Trail Riders this weekend at Nancy Boys Sprint Enduro. We'll be out there. Uh, those are a great time. Uh, I really enjoy that format. So if you're not familiar with that type of racing or that series, essentially it's a time trial. Um, you'll run anywhere between six and eight. Uh, it's basically broke up into two sections. There'll be a, a enduro section and a cross section. And um, you'll run each of those sections three to four times, depending on the length of those. I think the one coming up, we're just gonna do uh, three times each. And then they basically take your cumulative time to see how you fall scoring within your class then. So it's a time trial, fast man wins. and. You'll run the section, you'll get a 15 minute break, get back in line, you know, you can rehydrate, get back in line for your next section, go and run that as quickly as you can. And then uh, once you once you completed your six or eight segments for the day, they accumulate your times and that's how, how it goes. So I enjoy it, it's fun. A little bit change of pace from hair scrambles where you, you just go nonstop for two and a half hours where you actually get to take a little break, go back to the trailer, see your family if they're there, talk to them for a little bit, breaks up the day a little bit, then go back out and ride again. So it's a fun, fun day. I encourage you to go out and try that next week. wood section it's nice to get out here and get some open air and be able to ventilate a little bit get some air flowing on you open it up a bit I just wish there was a little more a little more of the grass track but overall you can't complain like I said great great course they set up today I did a great job all day long telling me there's a bridge there. Honestly, not making fun of him. He did a great job. Every time I came through, got a bridge. Even on lap four I came through, got a bridge. Telling me every time. So hats off to him. We had those those folks back there side of the track cheering me on. That makes a difference, man. It really gets you going a little bit when you got these spectators out here cheering for you. Um, I don't know. A little encouragement goes a long way, I guess. So. We're coming back in. This is we're coming back into the scoring woods here. This is closing in on the end. We ran this um, on this lap already, um, but it was just on the first first section there. So now we're coming back in and coming back through where we're going to be approaching the, the scoring tent again. As I come out of the yellow ribbon here, Tyler Moore is going to go flying by me right about now. And just like that, he's gone. As usual, thanks for watching. I'm going to close the video with some photos that we captured on the day of our family. If you enjoyed this and want to see more, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. We're always releasing new content. Thanks.